Hi, in this video, I wanna help those vintage and antique dealers on Etsy sell more items. I am a digital antique nomad, which means I drive around the country with a van full of stuff, buying and selling as I go, and shipping as I go. I'm currently in a yurt in New Mexico where it's pretty cold, but beautiful scenery, and they gave me this old RV to work out of, living in the yurt, working out of the RV. I still do six or so shows a year, sometimes more if you count small local shows that I set up primarily to shop during, during setup. But most of my sales and most of my profit in the year comes from selling online, so it's important for me to be successful. Throughout the video, I will share the Etsy shops of four friends who have given me permission to use their accounts and are good examples of how to sell on Etsy. I have some helpful hints for beginners and a one big sort of hint or idea that should help sellers of all abilities and success rates on Etsy. There are a lot of websites out there with keys to selling on Etsy, but if you follow my, my steps, my simple steps, you should sell more. First key, although not necessarily the most important key, is to have good items at good prices. I know, you're thinking that's probably the only important key, and it is very important. And it's important whether you're selling on Etsy, selling on eBay, selling online, anywhere, at shows, flea markets, or whatever, you gotta have good items. The goods and pricing matter, but they aren't the only thing that matters. At any show, the dealer with the best merchandise or the best prices doesn't necessarily sell the most. The dealers that tend to sell the most are the ones with the best reputation, those with repeat customers, those that present the stuff the best visually, and those that have the best sales pitch, or in this case, description. You don't need to make up a story to sell antiques, but telling a story about an object or describing the history of a piece is very important for selling. This is the same one Etsy, which leads to the second key. The second key is to take good photos. You need good photos and you need a nice, clear description and title. Both build trust for custom from customers. This works the same at shows or in shops. Presentation is very important. Be sure to place it in the relevant category. If you are new to Etsy but come from the eBay world, you will notice there are way fewer categories. This can make it harder to find the right one. Also, you need a good shop description. Tell about yourself and your experience. This can help build customer trust too. Make a good banner that's eye-catching. You need a store name that makes sense too. It sort of leads them to believe, to know what you do. Finally, the item title. You really need, you really want to nail this. It's the thing that shows up in searches. Use as many keywords in the title as possible. Final little tip, be sure to ship as fast as possible because Etsy tracks that. And Etsy tracks a lot of things, which leads me to my final and most important point. Etsy is run like a social media platform. You're like, what? No, it's a selling, it's a selling website. Yeah, well, you know, eBay back in the day was just a selling website and they changed things. They came up with the best match and all these other changes. Well, Etsy's the same way. It's run just like a social media platform. That means it's an algorithm. Some people are searching for a specific item, but there are tons of items that come up in that search. Where Etsy puts your listing is what matters. You need to work or game the algorithm to get sales. So this is sort of like a dealer at an in-person live show does better because they have a good reputation. Etsy likes to sell stuff. So they show customers random or suggested items. How does that end up being your items that they show? Etsy rewards those who do well in the algorithm. So work it. If Etsy gives you a tool, use it. Just like when Instagram first introduced videos. If a person didn't use Reels, their account tended to grow way more slowly than it did before the Reels were introduced. And much slower than the other accounts that had Reels. Again, use all the features. They give you these features for a reason, whether it's social media or Etsy. Use all the features. First, Use the entire allotment of photos available, especially for more expensive items. Yeah, this might be a pain if your item's only $25, but if it's more expensive, you need to use all the photos. Not only does this build customer trust because they can see an item from all angles, it helps with the algorithm. It tracks whether you're using all the tools available. Use the video feature for the same reason. Fill in all the tags. It helps with the search engine optimization, but it also shows the algorithm you are working to sell stuff. See how Etsy shows you where traffic is coming from? Why did they do this? Because it's important. They want you to drive traffic to your shop. You can do this by linking your shop on your website and promoting it on social media. You can also run ads within Etsy. There are some other features you can use too. Etsy wants people to use all these features. They want more sales and thus a higher percentage for them. You can use the abandoned cart discount or run a special sale. This all helps, but it does lower the overall profit margin. Instagram wants to promote the popular content, so the better it does, the better it will do. Same with Etsy. The more you sell, the more likely you are to sell in the future. It pushes popular sellers. It pushes popular sellers. Now, I don't sell that much on Etsy, despite doing all the above. Although, 
I could post more Etsy links on my social media account than I do. So why am I doing this video? I'm not even a good seller. Well, I know why I don't sell and that's why I'm doing the video. The one reason I don't sell more, I don't list enough. That's like the most important thing, listing enough. Consistency is key. For me, Etsy is my fourth option for selling online. New inventory first goes on my email list or my website. Then a few days or weeks later, I post it on social media. I tend to sell two to three items a week this way. Next items go on eBay, but only after a few waiting a few days. Why eBay before Etsy for me? Simply the items sell better on eBay for me. Finally, after that, I tried to list the items on Etsy. So the net result is I don't list enough on Etsy. Stuff sells before I get to Etsy and I tend to shrug it off or forget to do so. But all my friends who do well on Etsy, what do they have in common? Consistency. They all have lots of listings and they all list semi-regularly. Consistency is the key, just like it is the key to any social media platform, whether that's Instagram, YouTube, or whatever. You don't need thousands or hundreds of listings, but it seems to be helpful to have at least 100 items listed on Etsy. Try to list new items every week. My one friend swears by listing at least once a day. You might not need to do that, but if you plan on listing five items a week, I would spread it out over two days. Maybe list two items on Monday and the other three on Wednesday or Thursday. It shows more activity on the site. Seems to help with the algorithm. If you are listing 20 items a month, it'd be better to spread them out throughout the month rather than all at once. I know what you're thinking. This guy doesn't sell on Etsy because he's too expensive. And hey, that's possibly true. But I sell in other venues, so I can't be too expensive. I also, there's two sellers on Etsy who I didn't put in, um, I didn't list because I don't really know them that well, but they buy a, they buy from me on social media and they mark it way up and resell it on Etsy. So the prices can't be too bad. What do those accounts have going for them? Consistency. Consistency and lots of listings. They both have 10 to 20 more listings than me. Easily. Think about the most successful restaurants you know. They aren't necessarily the cheapest or even the best or even the combination of the two where they're a good value for the bang for the buck so to speak the places with the most or the best brand awareness and the brand lo loyalty seem to do the best and it's not necessarily correlated to pricing or quality it's the same with antique and vintage dealers whether on etsy or elsewhere brand loyalty matters and on etsy it comes from selling you sell and then these people like what they buy from you they then are loyal to you so to get brand loyalty, you not only get to sell, but you need to be accurate with your descriptions and accurate with your titles and accurate with your photos. If you do all that stuff, you will build brand loyalty. Brand awareness, that's a little bit more tricky. Brand awareness on Etsy comes from other places. You can share your shop online and spread the word yourself. You can spend money on Etsy ads and advertise it within Etsy, or you can make the algorithm work for you. The more you sell, the more you will sell. The more you sell, the more you will sell. Et Etsy wants sales. They want that commission. So they'll reward within the algorithm the sellers who sell, meaning the best sellers show up higher in searches, get pushed towards the customers. The best way to sell on Etsy is to list more on Etsy. The more listings you have, the more you can sell from. You can also game the system a little bit by listing some items so cheap they have to sell fast. That way you get some sales under your belt and you show the algorithm you are a seller. Personally, I don't want to spend money driving traffic to Etsy. I'd much rather spend money driving to my own website. So that's one of the reasons why Etsy's last for me. My eBay store works without me spending money advertising it. But I have 175 items listed on eBay, roughly. 175 versus the 50 on Etsy. That's why eBay sells better. I list more on eBay. That's what Etsy needs, consistent listings. As an aside, there's the question of free shipping. All of my listings are free US shipping. So I price the items and try to account for the worst case scenario, which for me is shipping from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. Of course, this makes the items way more expensive for people who live nearby. So the free, the free shipping is supposed to help you with the algorithm, but then I don't know if you either you account for shipping it too far away and you lose sales that are closer to you because the item seems too expensive, or you don't account for shipping it far away and you get burned every time you ship to Oregon from Delaware, which has happened to me. I don't know what to do about that. My one friend used to do it and he swore, he swore by it and then he has switched to charging for shipping because it was costing him too many sales on the East Coast. So I don't know what the answer to that is. But in conclusion, the answer is be consistent list 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 as many as possible being successful in etsy 
can be a grind. It can be a grind. But looking at my friends' accounts and some other sales sellers on there, it can be rewarding too. Down the road, I want to do an Etsy listing challenge where I list 30 items in 30 days and track the progress. So if you enjoyed this video, look for that video sometime in the spring. In the meantime, list, 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 and sell, sell, sell. If you enjoyed this video and you like antique dealer content, please hit like and subscribe and follow my antique nomadic journey as I travel across the country buying and selling out of my van. Peace.